I thought it was a great series, uh, obviously. Uh, but besides the four wins, first four game sweep in 28 years, I mean, that's hard to fathom. Uh, but it just speaks how hard four game series are, and they're kind of rare. Uh, but it was, a, I thought it was a really good series by both teams, actually. And uh, BYU has got really good ball club. Uh, I think they're going to have a great season moving forward. Uh, they're well coached, obviously, and they've got really good personnel, and they're older. Uh, we were fortunate to come out of that thing with a sweep. I think was it three, two or two or three? They were all one-run games except for one. Three other four. Uh, so, and that you know that goes to our character as well, and. Uh, the belief that those boys have and the leadership that's inside that clubhouse. So I thought the fans were awesome this weekend, and our players did too. Uh, they were out in full force uh, for the most part and, and were in it from first pitch to the last, which was awesome uh, to see because it's a definitive advantage for us here at home. And uh, having 33 home games, that's a big deal. So uh, the more Cajun Nation comes out and gets behind these guys, because it's a great product, uh, it's going to be an exciting season. This week, we got to flip the page. Uh, last week's over. Uh, McNeese always plays us tough. They have a great venue and a great atmosphere as well. We're looking forward to going over there. We'll start Brennan Moody. Uh, it's his turn to go again. So uh, we'll start him uh, tomorrow night and uh, look to get off to a great start and, and play some good baseball. Uh, if you fast forward to this weekend, Campbell is uh, maybe uh, one of our better opponents all year. Uh, they're really, really good and uh, great coaching staff. They have great players, uh, and they've got a really good track record going over the last several years. They're top 30 program, in my opinion, and uh, so it'll be exciting baseball this weekend as well. Coach, you talked about the, the three of the four being one run games. There's not four out of the first seven. you think it's important for your team to get tested like that early on in the year? Well, if as long as you can win them. And, you know, that's where – that's the separator is, is who can win tight games. And this team's won a lot of those over the last two years. And they're very – like I was saying the other day, they're very comfortable in those situations. And, uh, you know, we're fortunate to have won all of them. But they didn't have to all be that close either, uh, if that makes sense. Uh, but, yeah, anytime you can live to tell about it, it's a great experience. If you don't – then, you know, it's uh, obviously a lot of cause for concern. What kind of baseball does Campbell play? I haven't gotten there yet, Kevin. Uh, right now I'm just focused on, you know, how we can improve from last week uh, to today's practice to McNeese tomorrow night. But obviously Jake Wells coached there uh, alongside the guy that's there now. Uh, so... I'm going to, you know, I know they have really good arms and I know they can hit. Uh, as far as their style, uh, you know, I'll, I'll find out more about them as a, as a week goes on. Over this game tomorrow in Campbell, is, I mean, is it even more important to find out a little more about your bullpen than, than your starters or how do you kind of see Yeah, that? I think you're right. I mean, we're I'm still waiting on a couple, two or three guys to get another opportunity and show us something. Uh I think we can still add two or three guys along the way. So uh, they'll have opportunities tomorrow night and obviously this weekend. What have you seen from Brendan Moody so far this year to give him the opportunity to go out again tomorrow night? A lot of strikes with bad intentions. And if you deliver the pitch with uh, copious amounts of bad intentions behind it, then it's worth having a strike on the hitter already. I mean, hitting's that difficult. And if it's an uncomfortable at bat uh, from the guy you're facing, that's a definitive advantage for the pitcher, and that's what I've seen. You played seven games, and you only have one pitcher that's thrown more than seven innings. Does that say something about the depth that you have available? I'd like to create some depth, uh, not too much. You know, I think too many options can get you in trouble. Uh, I think. You know, having 10 to 12 guys, though, that we know what we're going to get every time out would be nice. Early in the season, nationally, you guys are 10th ranked in sacrifice flies. Can you talk about the importance of not only 
get trading those outs for runs, but doing it efficiently. Yeah, I mean, sacrifice flies. I call them rally killers. <laughs> uh, I like them. They're not an at-bat, which is a good thing, and I like driving in runs. I'd like to see us learn to trade places with guys. And, uh, you know, obviously you're going to – you want to get that run in any way you can. But defensively, put yourself on defense, and most times they're going to trade a run for an out any day of the week. So our uh, our mission is just to keep reaching base at a high percentage. I think we're 410 or so on base, which uh, when the dust settles, if we can maintain that, that will be – you know, at the top of something. Uh, it's just an offense that will do whatever it takes to win. If it's a sack fly, if it's a ground ball to second, uh, if it's a steal at home, whatever it might be. Uh, and it's not so much about the numbers or, or ranking or anything like that as much as finding a way to score more runs than our opponent. What does Jackson need to do if he gets another out and keep his name in the hat? And what about him maybe helping in the bullpen? You're right. I think uh, I think Tib talking to Tib this morning may try to get him back out tomorrow. Uh, I, it's not a stuff thing. I, I think it's just uh, you know knocking off the rust and and settling in. And he's a guy we're going to need, and so he'll get obviously uh, more opportunities. And I think you'll see him continue to get better. Staying on the topic of pitching, how important has it been for you to see Blake Marshall have the early success that he's had after everything he's gone through? Yeah, that's uh, I'm really happy for him because he's gone through the ringer here, ups and downs, and traveled, not traveled. Uh, you know, he he wasn't even on the bus last year going to the regional. Uh, because we had trimmed the roster down. But he never wavered. You know, a lot of kids nowadays are jumping that portal, to, you know, or do this or that. Now I'll be back, Coach Daggs. That's what he said. And he came back ready to roll. And you're seeing some Mitch Williams type stuff uh, because there's a little volatility in there, which, you know, it kind of adds to the allure, too, of a, a, uncomfortable at bat. But the slider has been wipe out. He's been able to finish every hitter right or left with the slider. And the main thing is he's throwing it for strikes. You probably, it seemed like you kind of knew that Caleb was going to give you some tough decisions to make, but you have a lot of capable outfield now. Yeah, we do. You know, I don't think Higgs saw the field on Saturday and he's hitting four something and got four or five doubles. Uh, Stelly obviously has a, a knack for the, the big moment. Uh, and if we get Vayon going, you know, that's going to be a big, big plus. Uh, Rock's going to get rolling at some point, but he's finding ways to reach base and play in gold glove defense. Uh, Hoodie's been Hoodie and uh, just really good at all of it. Uh, so right now in that outfield, you know, it's probably four guys. Uh, and then that DH spot, you know, Stelly's obviously going to continue to get opportunities. Uh, and I'd like to get a couple more guys in there. I'd like to see Raymond get going and, and uh, John Taylor. And it's just that lineup's winning, so what are you going to do? Has CJ earned some more playing time as a starting second baseman, or is that still pretty up in there? No, I think – I think he's trying to run with it right now. And he's playing good defense. Uh, he's hitting 400. You know, obviously it's seven games in. But he just looks uh, really in control in the box to me. He looks like an older veteran type guy in the box. And what CJ's done a really great job of is not letting a swing and miss affect the rest of his at bat and then letting that at bat affect the rest of the day. And... Uh, I'm really proud of where he's at.